Hello. Hey. Hey, we're here to talk about winter camping. <laughs> and we're in the desert of Arizona. Well, you know, we like to come up with unique places to talk about odd things. It's a little cold at night. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We're going to share what we've learned over the last uh, year and a half of camping in our truck camper. Uh, these, again, are just opinions. They are just opinions. We yes. did stay in some cold, snowy areas, yes, believe we it have. or not. Say, grab your favorite beverage and come along. Come on. One of the items that I've mentioned regularly was our fireplace or basically uh, it's an electric heater that thing has been really great in this campground in particular since we did have electricity that's obviously not always going to be the case but uh, we will definitely use it when we can another option minus the electric fireplace might be to use your air conditioner heat pump I actually have one but we haven't really used it, mainly because the electric fireplace is a little bit more efficient, especially when you start getting into the 30s temperature-wise and below. Another option might be the space heaters if you don't have a fireplace. In our sticks and bricks house, we used to use some oil-filled heaters that were electric, uh, so if they did fall over that really wasn't that much of a concern. The only thing would be make sure to always plug any space heater directly into the outlet and never have any extension cords going to that. Propane! It's always been propane. Oh, this could be a propane emergency. When we're not connected to power, we use our suburban propane heater and that works pretty well. You're definitely going to go through some propane in the very cold months though. We had a hard frost last night. Thankfully, uh, host campers do have two 30-pound propane tanks. Our first one is almost empty, but we have a second one completely full, so we never have major problems with that. But might have to look at some other options to reduce the amount of propane. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. To conserve propane, we tend to keep our thermostat lower during the winter. During the day, we try to keep uh, the temperature around 62 to 65, but at night we will turn it down somewhere between 56 and 59 degrees. Even when we're on electric, we will also run the propane furnace because that pushes air down into the basement to keep that warm. So we do a one-two punch there. We track our propane usage by using a tank sensor from Mopeka called Tank Check. It's, it works most of the time, uh, but uh, it's the best thing that we've found so far that can track our tanks. The original ones came with these little tiny things that never, that always seemed to fall off. So we ended up buying this rubber piece around that gave some distance in there so the tank sensor could work well. Mopeka has an app where you can track your propane usage. It is powered by a coin cell battery that you can replace. We have had some problems with connectivity. We use a little bit of dielectric grease to get a better connection to the tank. That has helped most of the time. You look cool, boys. This is a bit nifty. As you would expect, the most leaky area of our camper are the slides. While the slides do have a gasket on the side it's really not enough to keep that heavier winds and insects for that matter out and with that cold wind comes a lot of air through the bottom of these slides that you know basically your feet are frozen cold 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 so what we have done is added some half inch pipe insulation we have that insulation all the way around our camper slides, both in the living room, kitchen, and the bathroom. And as you would expect, this is a pretty simple installation. We end up getting the half inch pipe insulation. Don't get the one with the adhesive. Um, it'll get really annoying and sticky. You don't need that. Uh, and really, we just put it underneath this piece of wood. This is a fairly straightforward thing. Only takes a couple of minutes to install. Uh, the challenge is you do have to remove it and remember to remove it on move day. Ha 
last year we made several window cushions that had this black material along with some reflectics in there to give us some additional insulation during the winter months. We decided to expand that by adding one to our door. This was a very significant point of cold air coming in. I made two panels, two separate panels, so we can get in and out fairly easily. The same method that I used on the other ones where we have magnets on the doors and then magnets inside the actual uh, piece. Uh, obviously, I can't really sew, so if I can do this, most anybody can do this as long as you can get your hands on a sewing machine. Since I already had the dang sewing machine out, I ended up also adding the fan vent covers on both the kitchen area and the bathroom. Store them right next to our recliners that are close to the window. As far as insulation inside, we have a separate video about how we put insulation. We used a combination of a half inch pink foam with a Reflectix coating on one side all around the inside of the camper in order to add as much insulation as possible. I did paint all of the insulation gray afterwards just because I liked it. In the cascade, this, this area here is for the propane tank on the outside. That is especially cold, so getting that insulation all the way back there was quite needed. I even removed the drawers and insulated around there. Underneath the dinette table, we did pull that out and insulated all around underneath there uh, as much as we could get. As far as the bedroom goes, we insulated the closets as much as we could on the bottom um, and on the sides. Basically anything that had direct exposure to outside. And our bed. One of the most important things to have is to be comfortable while you're sleeping in really cold weather. What we've done here is a combination of insulation as well as airflow. So underneath our bed, you'll see that we added some foam padding that we just got at our local hardware store. And then as you go a little bit further underneath there, you will see our Froley system. Our Froley system is added there to make sure that we have adequate airflow so we're not going to have mold and stuff growing. That's not much fun. The first few years we just used the Froley system, but we're still getting a lot of cold coming up through there. So that foam was added this year. I'm not sure if that's actually going to cause mold. We don't know. Um, I'll let you know if we end up having that problem, though. Seems to be a tightly confined annular force field, sir. Place there to protect the water. Yes. One of the obvious challenges in cold weather is how to keep your freshwater tank from freezing. We're going to go through some of the things that we have done in our basement to try to help reduce that event. Gary's been working on another project in here, but this gives me a great opportunity to show you all of the insulation we've done in the basement. We'll start off with our water lines. We've done a ton of insulation where we can to try to keep some something between the outside layer of the camper and the hoses. So we have Reflectix on the actual walls. Then we added the pipe insulation. Gary even put some of this insulation behind the pump itself. Switching over to the passenger side. Again, we're lining the walls as much as we can. We really couldn't get behind this gray tank, which is a bummer, but we tried with what we could um, all the way back until we start getting into our controller panels, which I did not line. I gave up at that point. There's just a lot of a lot of space here. We also we also as much as possible put insulation on the bottom. We even have it underneath this slide out tray. In our basement, we do keep a heater in here uh, for times when it gets really cold. 
It's this little tiny doojabi here. We ended up buying that at Walmart. Uh, the one thing that I really liked about it is that it has manual switches. Uh, the one advantage of that is when we're parked and it's really cold, I can plug that into this 110 connection with this lovely little Bluetooth on off switch. By using that switch, we can control whether that heater is on or off from inside the camper and then not have to open up this door and let all the heat out. So that it seems to work pretty well for us. If it's really cold outside and we're parked without electricity, we will still turn on that heater for an hour or two just to get that basement nice and toasty and then keep that door closed. We can do that because we have the battery power, but you'll have to check to see whether you can do that as well. When that Victron is in high use, it generates quite a bit of heat, which you can use to your advantage in the winter. We use these fans above. Here we've got one and one over there. We use those fans to help move the air around in this basement. All that airflow will also help keep your gray tank nice and toasty over here that's on the right hand side. If you have a Victron inverter, you have the ability to modify this. We have a screen, but there is an app that can be used as well to reduce your input current. Reducing that current will allow the Victron to heat up a bit and again, get some of that residual heat in your basement. We even added some of that insulation in front of the water tank. The door to access this area is insulated, but extra insulation doesn't seem to hurt. We fill our tanks rather than using city water. That alleviates the concern of that hose freezing as it's trying to come into your rig. Other options might be to try to keep your water tank mostly full during the winter. It's gonna be harder to freeze a large amount of water than a small amount of water. And last but not least, if you are going to be filling your water tank in the winter, definitely make sure to blow out those water hoses after you're done. Um, otherwise, they kind of turn into a gigantic ice block. Take it from us who might have done that. When it's cold outside, we also protect our black and gray tanks by using um, RV antifreeze. Make sure to use RV antifreeze, not other antifreeze. We typically will put in a cup or two when the tanks are empty. And then as we're using it, we will continue to add a cup or so um, as we're going. On our rig, we have had problems with the gray tank valve freezing in the winter. And uh, we just recently installed a gray tank valve heater. So check that video uh, here if you're interested. Also something that we have not done yet is to get tank heaters. We haven't triggered that because we're not sure whether we really need it, um, but that is certainly an option. We have these Gobi sensors everywhere in our cabin. We like to monitor everything and that gives us peace of mind to know what's going on and the ability to make changes if needed. While these Govi sensors are really awesome, they do not give you a real-time feedback if something is going on. You really have to look at the app to see what's happening. In our freezer and our refrigerator, we use these sensor push sensors. This is the one from our freezer. And even with my phone off, as this temperature gets up, it should give me a warning. There we go. So that alarm, I can actually hear. So then I can go in and see the actual temperatures. I can also see history. Um, these things are great, um, but a lot more expensive than the Gobi, so we use them sparingly. Donnie. Moist. Golly, I do love moist cake. Moisture in your rig is inevitable, 
but there are easy steps to keep things under control. First is simply wiping down your windows if you get condensation on them. When cooking, make sure you have your fan pulling that moisture out and crack another window to get airflow. When taking showers, do the same thing. Turn on that fan and crack a window. We ended up purchasing this dehumidifier since our AC wasn't pulling out enough water. We like this one since it can collapse and we can store it in our shower. When I talked about the insulation under our bed, I also talked about the Froley system, but this is the more important section to really have something that can keep your bed elevated to get that airflow underneath your mattress. And sometimes the simple solutions are the best. Since our closets don't get a lot of airflow, we do tend to use a damp rid type solution in here to try to keep our clothes from getting moist. Yes, yes. This is a bit nipply out. I mean nippy out. <laughs> Another very simple and obvious thing is to open your windows when it is beautiful and sunny out. It's 59 degrees outside, but the Arizona sun is huge and will bring in a lot of heat, so much so that we actually had to open up some of the windows because it got a little too warm in here. We do have the window covers, but take them down when you can, um, especially when it's nice outside. Some more simple stuff to keep warm in the winter is wear layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it. You know, not everybody like onions. We usually have one or two layers on uh, to kind of capture that heat. Have cool fuzzy slippers that work. This is our winter blanket. It's a nice, wonderful Sherpa blanket that keeps you really warm. I think we should hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. Since you're winter camping, and we'll just assume there's like drifts of snow out here. Um, not sand. Not sand. Um, you you want to prepare your truck a little bit. So what I do on our truck, we never let our tanks get below half. Okay. So doing even here in the desert we try to keep them both above half because you never know what's going to happen it could rain and, and we couldn't get out so at least we have some way to keep ourselves sustained and then what else i do is i also keep it in death there are my other junk but we just kind of keep an extra can of death now in the winter time i do keep it in the can of the truck because it will freeze so if it gets really cold out you leave it in the bed of your truck it will freeze and it's going to be no good after that so you don't want to don't want that to freeze. In your DEF tank itself, there's a heater on the truck that automatically keeps it warm, so it won't freeze. But on the, in the truck here, we also, just to keep it repaired, because you never know I'm stuck in the snow, which I have several times. We also keep uh, these tread devices. Recovery boards? Recovery boards, so that we can get ourselves out. We have yet to use them. Um, we haven't gotten stuck. Something that you want to try to keep built while you're winter camping. The other thing too is also check your tires. Make sure that they're not bald. You want to make sure you have enough tread on them. Tread is important in snow. The other portion of that is depending on where you're driving in the snow, you may need chains for your tires as well. Um, we keep a sock and they're, they're buried in one of my cabinets right now. So. Trying to dig them out would be disastrous. But we do keep those for the rear tires um, so that in the event we do need them, when we have them, the tires are snow and mud, not mud rated, but you know how that goes. I'm sorry, we have a little extra security so that the uh, tire chains are in the truck, especially when we're in the mud and stuff like that. So that's all the nice thing. It's just too many random elements. The, 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 the stimuli are overwhelming. Another simple option is when it's really cold, just keep the camper on the truck. Uh, we did not do that when we were in Illinois and it got very cold. If you can stay on the truck in the winter, you are so much better off. You got that belly kind of protected. If it's really cold outside, consider short travel days. That will give you enough time to get to some place with electricity or another way to prevent that cold from getting inside. 
Really cold days, consider keeping the furnace on while driving to keep those pipes and tanks warm. So there you have it. This is all of the stuff that we've learned about winter camping. Uh, good, bad, ugly. So uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, you, agreements, disagreements, definitely put them below. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, we're all fears. Thanks for stopping by. See you later. Talk to you later.